Hi, Kevin Coop here, and this is FaceTime with the Content Guy. You know, this week a couple of members of the uh, Morning Newsbeat community have sent me a story that they read on a website called InvestorPlace.com. It, it comes under the title, The End of the Big Box Era. And the story starts out by saying that a funny thing happened on the way to the retail recovery of 2010-2011. It says, Big box retailers didn't pull out of their nosedive. More casualties are on the way. And unfortunately, not to mention needlessly in many cases, these retailers are powerless to prevent their own demise. Now, a lot of different names are mentioned in this story. Names like Borders, Lowe's, uh, Linens and Things, uh, Best Buy, go figure, right? Based on the kind of conversations we've been having here on Morning News Beat. Um, the story also suggests that some of Walmart's recent problems in terms of same-store sales doldrums uh, here in the United States uh, you know, may be related to the same kinds of issues that other smaller big-box stores are facing. Um, here's how the story assesses those problems. What's causing the mass extermination of big-box retailers is that they're big-box retailers with all of the drawbacks and vulnerabilities thereof. These drawbacks and vulnerabilities include, one, poor in-store service, two, not being price competitive with the web, and three, not recognizing that drawing a spending crowd is as much about entertaining shoppers as it is about selling compelling merchandise. Oh sure, it worked until a few years ago because to buy something, you essentially had to go to a retail locale. That made retailers arrogant, thinking it was their special skill, quality of sales training, or knowledge of the customer that drew a, a crowd. Surprise, it wasn't. As it turns out, Sears is boring. Dillard's isn't selling the hottest fashions. Shoppers may know more about the technology they're looking to buy than most Best Buy employees do. These retailers did reasonably well uh, in the early 2000s, mainly because shoppers had little choice but to go to those places if they wanted to buy something. The thing is, you know, it seems to me that these criticisms, uh, you know, are, can be leveled at a lot of retailers, not just big box retailers. Any retailer, big or small, um, upscale, middle of the road, value driven, independent chain, doesn't really matter. Any retailer that is not working overtime at creating a retail in store experience that is compelling and entertaining and relevant uh, to the shopper. They really don't have any right to complain if they're not doing particularly well in the competitive wars, especially if they're competing with online, uh, online retailers that have different sets of rules and tend to proceed in different kinds of ways. So let's go back to the Investor Place article for a second. Consumers want to be dazzled by something they can't get via their smartphone. Store employees can't be insulting or annoying anymore because everybody knows those extended warranties are worthless. Retailers can't count on being a price leader anymore either because everybody price matches. Sadly, most of these big box names will probably never get it. As such, they can make for poor investments, struggling to just survive. Many of them won't even do that. It really is a new era in consumerism. Boy, do they have that right. That's what's on my mind this Thursday morning, and as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.